Center this morning. Police need your help finding a missing man. Here's a closer look at Leon Harris Jr. A family member reported him missing yesterday. Georgetown police say the last time his wife saw him was February 25th between 10 and 11 at night on High Market Street. Officials say the 32 year old is 5'8 and 217 pounds. If you know where he is, make sure you contact the Georgetown Police Department. New this morning at 5.02 with beach season right around the corner. Many of you in the north and south strands may be wondering when your beach accesses will be fixed. Dozens are still destroyed from Hurricane Matthew. Meredith Heline joining us live in Litchfield Beach with what you have to look forward to. Meredith. Good morning, Theo. Yes, this, uh, this beach access in Litchfield Beach is a little tricky because although this tape has fallen down, it still needs work done on it like many other beach accesses throughout Georgetown County and North Myrtle Beach. But the good news is county and city officials are working hard to have all of these beach accesses fixed by May. FEMA visited both Georgetown County and North Myrtle Beach to look at the damage done to the beach, dune walkovers, and beach accesses after Hurricane Matthew. FEMA will cover about 75% of the cost for both the county and city. The Georgetown County engineer over the project says repairs will cost a little more than $400,000. Work started in February on all even-numbered beach accesses in Garden City, and they're working their way down to Litchfield before beginning to fix the odd-numbered beach accesses. In North Myrtle Beach, it will cost $129,000 to repair 25 walkovers. The city spokesman explains why they're just now getting to the project. When you have a situation like a hurricane and you have damage, uh, for a good example is the debris collection, you just don't go out and collect it yourself immediately. You have to wait, bring in FEMA, set up contracts, make sure that you document everything so that FEMA can reimburse you for that labor. Uh, you don't want to have to go and have tax increases to recover from a hurricane if FEMA help is available to you. And he says North Myrtle Beach hopes to start work March 15th and be done by May 15th. It should take 60 days. Here in Georgetown County, they hope to have all of their beach accesses repaired by Easter weekend. That's April 15th and 16th. In the next half hour, I'll tell you what's being done to these beach accesses to make sure they're more, dur they're more durable should a hurricane hit again. Reporting live from Litchfield, I'm Meredith Heline, WMBF News. All right, thank you, Meredith. An increase in those who drive under the influence is causing police in the PD to beef up patrol. This month, the Florence Police Department will hold a number of safety traffic points. Drivers need to show their vehicle registration as well as license and insurance information. Police say the goal is not just to write tickets, but also to decrease the number of crashes, especially those that turn deadly. Spring is a season where more activities occur and w this is an opportunity for us to be out in the field and try to make uh, the people that attend these events uh, safer by enforcing, uh, enforcing the laws and trying to keep the roadway safe. While the city does not hold traffic checkpoints regularly, it does have a team that participates with other agencies during their checkpoint events. We have new details this morning for the very first time since allegedly killing his mother. We are hearing the 911 call of that teenager that is held responsible. Take a listen. What did you say happened, sir? I killed somebody. Okay, what's your name? Oliver. Okay, sir, why did you kill somebody? Because I felt like it. You felt like it, okay. Who did you kill? Those voices there were altered as required by North Carolina law. The operator was able to keep him on the phone until police arrived. That's when they found Oliver Funes Muchado walking out of the house with a knife in one hand, his mother's head in the other. He's charged with first-degree murder. He is behind bars, and his next hearing is Tuesday, March 14th. We have an update on a story that we told you about as it was happening. This morning, we are hearing from friends and family members of a woman accused of killing two people while driving intoxicated. Troopers say Clarice Payano hit Kakima Alexander and Latoya Garcia yesterday morning on Interstate 20. The two were trying to change a tire when it happened. Their one-year-old child in the car at the time survived. Clarice Payano appeared in court for a bond hearing yesterday and was denied bond. She's facing a felony driving under the influence resulting in death charge. Our sister station was there during that hearing and was able to talk to family members and friends of Payano. They say they're still dealing with the shock of everything. It's one thing to read about it happening to someone else. It's another thing to live it.
to experience it with someone you know so close so personal so it's a lot to process i just want everybody to know that she's not a bad person yes she did make a mistake as many of us have made mistakes Payano is also facing charges of marijuana possession and not having a license. The felony DUI involving death charges she's facing could get her anywhere from one year to 25 years in prison. The attorneys for Michael Slager want to know about any promises made to the man who recorded the shooting on a cell phone. Slager shot and killed Walter Scott after a traffic stop in April of 2015. He was charged with murder after the video of that shooting went public. His defense wants to know if the government made any promises to the man who recorded the shooting. Slager's first state trial ended in a mistrial back in December. The state plans to retry him this August. Well, the temperature